So lecture one, two, feedback control system block diagrams. As we have already seen, a useful tool for designing control systems is the block diagram. The plant and the controller are represented as blocks. Usually a transfer function or a transfer function matrix can describe the function of each block. A typical block diagram is shown in figure one, three. So this left one specifically, we've got a plant with transfer function G, uh, output Y. We think of these typically as being Laplace domain variables, um, G, H, Y, U, E, F, et cetera. So the output Y, it gets fed back through some measurement typically H, uh, and the feedback transfer function H uh, results in Laplace transform variable F, it's compared via a summing junction subtraction from the command R. R minus F is, is what gives E. That goes into the controller transfer function C. And the output of the controller transfer function is U, which is the, the uh, input to the plant, also the control effort. In this configuration, um, well, actually, this is essentially what I just said. Uh, ideally, of course, the error is going to be zero here. That's, that's what we want, the error to be zero. Um, and each of these blocks uh, in the Laplace domain is a simple multiplication. So a transfer function going in. So if you see this block here for the plant, the output of that block is y, and it equals the the transfer function of the block G multiplying the input U. This is all in Laplace domain. So we could put in the explicit of S functions, but we uh, frequently will drop the of S just because it gets tedious to write. And it sometimes is um, less clear when you look at an equation if there are a bunch of, of S's in there. So, uh, great. Block diagrams express algebraic relationships in a Laplace domain. Blocks do not, which means, of course, the blocks do not dynamically load each other. So, um, when we saw block diagrams in system dynamics, we also um, were observant of this fact. So, what G does. Um, doesn't uh, uh, affect what C does other than um, in the sense that G outputs Y, which goes through H, which comes back around to, through feedback. So uh, it's only these algebraic relationships that we're considering here. There's no dynamic loading. So in the case of figure one, three, the relationships are, so uh, if we look here, the relationships are the error is the output of the summing junction, it's equal to R minus F, okay, R minus F. That's what a summing junction does, is it either adds or subtracts values. Then we have three blocks that uh, uh, we can consider as expressing an equation, which are the C, G, and H blocks. So the C block says that the output of, of the controller, U, is equal to C, the transfer function, uh, times E. So U equals C times E. Um, the transfer function is, of course, the relationship, the ratio of the output over the input, which is um, what gives us this relationship between the output and the input. Okay, so then uh, the G block, uh, Y, the output of the G block, is equal to G U. So Y equals G U. And then finally, for the, the measurement block, Y goes in, F comes out, so F equals HY. F equals HY. Great. The closed loop transfer function, which is an important term, is defined as the output over the command, Y over R. This is important or this important transfer function shows how the system should respond to commands of key importance for most performance criteria. So this is, is very frequently um, 
how we'll we'll think about how our choice of controller affects the closed loop transfer function. So uh, we're going to derive a closed loop transfer function here. So given the feedback block diagram of figure one three, the left one, solve for the closed loop transfer function y over r. So we want to know what is the output over the command. Okay, what is the relationship between the output and the command? So what we can do is simply use these algebraic relationships to derive that uh, relationship between the output and the command. Uh, we want to eliminate any intermediate variables, so we don't want to have E, U, or F show up in there. We just want to have a relationship between Y and R. And then we can have, of course, transfer functions included in that expression. So what we can do is... Uh, we have an equation 1, 1, C that has a relationship between Y and U. And we're going to start with this equation, and we're going to do some substitutions with the other equations um, to try to get to the relationship between Y and R. Okay? So we start out saying, and I'll drop the of S notation in here. So we start out saying Y equals G u, which is just equation 1, 1, c. And then we're going to plug in that u is equal to, from equation 1, 1, b, u is just equal to c, e. So, um, I will actually C E and this was equation 1 1 B and then we can say so G and C are our transfer functions uh, E is the error let's see if we have an equation for it sure enough we do so we use, just use this and we're using this so E equals R minus F okay so R minus F, and this was equation 1, 1A. One and finally, we can plug in equation 1D one, one for F, which is equal to HY. So G, C. Um, we have R, which is, which is the, out, uh, the input variable we're looking for, minus f is h y right so that was this last equation h y which is equation 1 1 d okay now we have y on both sides we don't have any of the intermediate variables left we've eliminated u e and f so we can rearrange this so this implies that y plus g c h y equals g c r, right? We've just added g c h y to, to both sides, and we've distributed g c to both terms here. We can factor out y here and divide both sides by what factors out or what it factors out of which is 1 plus GCH so we have Y equals G C over there's gonna be an R here right but I'm gonna hold off on writing the R over 1 plus G C H and then we have an R as well I broke the R off from the numerator because we want the relationship between y and r, and that makes this the transfer function we're looking for here. So this term is the transfer function that we're looking for. Uh, we can complete the final step, of course, by uh, dividing both sides by r. So we have y over r, which is the definition of the closed loop transfer function, equals 
GC over 1 plus GCH. So that is the expression for our closed loop transfer function.